Have you ever tried to truly wrap your head around the sheer scale of our solar system? We see pictures, we hear numbers, but the reality is almost too vast for our minds to grasp. For instance, did you know that the largest planet, the gas giant Jupiter, is so colossal that you could fit every other planet in the solar system inside of it and still have room to spare? To put it another way, if we were to compare it to our own home, you could fit a staggering 1,321 Earths inside of it. Imagine that. Over 1,300 worlds like ours, each with its own continents, oceans and atmosphere, all fitting comfortably within that one giant sphere. It's a scale that defies everyday comparison. The numbers are one thing, but seeing is believing. So today we're going to run some planetary simulations to give you a visceral idea of just how big some planets really are, and by extension how tiny others can be. We'll be exploring the cosmos from the comfort of your screen, comparing worlds, moons, and even dwarf planets in a way that will hopefully recalibrate your sense of cosmic scale. Prepare yourself, because it's going to be mind-blowing. To begin our journey, let's start small, really small. This is Mercury, the smallest planet in our solar system and the closest to the Sun. It's a world of extremes, with a sun-scorched surface that can reach 800 degrees Fahrenheit and a night side that plummets to minus 290. It's a dense, rocky ball, mostly made of a massive iron core. Now, how does it stack up against our home? As you can see, it's not much of a competition. Mercury is so small, in fact, that it's actually shrinking, having contracted by several kilometers over billions of years as its core cools. It's far too small to fit even one Earth inside of it. In fact, you'd need about 18 Mercuries to equal the volume of our planet. So Earth is out. But what about something a little closer to Mercury's weight class? Let's use our own moon as a measuring stick. Our moon is a familiar sight, but it's a celestial body of significant size in its own right. Even so, Mercury is still the clear winner here. It's substantially larger and more massive. Our simulations show that you could fit about two and a half of our moons inside of Mercury. But our moon is just one of over 200 moons in the solar system, and it's far from being the smallest. To get a real sense of Mercury's size, we need to bring in some other contenders. Let's look at Europa, one of Jupiter's Galilean moons, famous for the tantalizing possibility of a subsurface ocean. Or Triton, Neptune's largest moon, a frozen world that orbits its planet backwards. We could also use Titania, the largest moon of Uranus. And for a truly tiny comparison, there's Enceladus, a small icy moon of Saturn that spews water into space. And while we're gathering our celestial measuring sticks, we can't forget about Pluto. Even though Pluto isn't a moon, well, it's not officially a planet anymore either. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union reclassified it as a dwarf planet because while it is round and orbits the Sun, it hasn't cleared its neighborhood of other objects. It's actually smaller than our own Moon. So I'll add it to the list as well. It's a perfect candidate for our size comparison. All right, the stage is set. Let's start filling Mercury up. First, Jupiter's moon Europa. How many of these potential ocean worlds can we pack in? The answer is almost three. Three Europas could be contained within Mercury. Next, let's try the former planet, Pluto. Being even smaller than Europa, we can squeeze in a full five Plutos. Now we're starting to see how Mercury, despite being the smallest planet, is still a world of considerable size. But let's get to the truly surprising numbers. Let's take Titania. That's the largest moon of the ice giant Uranus, if you were wondering. It's a world of canyons and scarps, but it's a featherweight compared to Mercury. You would need a staggering 29 Titanias to fill the volume of Mercury, but even that pales in comparison to our final test. This is Enceladus. This tiny hyperactive moon of Saturn is only about 500 kilometers in diameter. It's one of the most reflective objects in the solar system, but it is minuscule. To fill up Mercury with these tiny ice balls, you would need an almost unbelievable 96 of them, nearly 100 entire worlds, each a fascinating destination in its own right, all fitting inside the solar system's smallest planet. But enough about the smallest planet, let's journey outward to our next destination, Mars. Known as the Red Planet, its rusty hue comes from iron oxide covering its surface. When we place it next to our home, the size difference is immediately obvious. Mars has a diameter just over half of Earth's, and its total volume is only about 15% of our planet's. 
To put its size into perspective, you could comfortably fit two of Mercury inside it. And what about our own Moon? You could pack about seven of them inside Mars. If we were to use the dwarf planet Pluto as a measuring stick, you could cram in roughly 23 Plutos. Mars even has its own tiny moons, Phobos and Deimos. Now let's head back inwards to visit Earth's so-called sister planet, Venus. Why is it called our sister? Because when it comes to size, they're practically twins. Venus is a mere 5% smaller than Earth by diameter, making it the closest in size to our own world. But don't be fooled by the similar size. Venus is a hellscape of crushing pressure. Because it's so voluminous, you could pack a staggering 15 Mercuries inside. It could also swallow almost six entire planets the size of Mars. For another impressive feat, Venus is large enough to contain Ganymede, Jupiter's colossal moon. Ganymede is not only the largest moon in our solar system, but it's also bigger than the planet Mercury and the only moon with its own magnetic field. Speaking of our home, let's appreciate Earth's scale. We've used it as our benchmark, but how does it measure up? If we were to hypothetically fill our planet, we could fit over six Marses inside. And as for our own moon, Earth has enough volume to contain 49 of them. It's a mind-boggling number that highlights the vastness of our own world. So far, all the rocky planets we've looked at, Mercury, Mars, and Venus, are smaller than Earth. To find a planet that can finally contain our own, we have to travel much farther out, past the asteroid belt, to the realm of the giants. Our first stop is the deep blue world of Neptune. This distant ice giant is so immense that it doesn't just fit one Earth. No, you could pack 57 Earths inside of it. And this is just the beginning of the true colossal scale of our solar system's outer planets. Neptune is the smallest ice giant on the block, but it's still huge. It could fit 67 Venuses. Uranus is only slightly larger than Neptune. It can fit one Neptune inside of it. Uranus can hold 63 Earths, and even more Venuses, or almost 10,000 Pluto. Now if you think Uranus is huge, well, Saturn is enormously gigantic 12. Uranus would fit inside it slightly more Neptunes. Now let's venture out to the gas giants, starting with the jewel of our solar system, Saturn. Its magnificent rings are iconic, but the sheer scale of the planet itself is what truly boggles the mind. To put it in perspective, Let's see how many of our familiar rocky planets could fit inside. As for Earth, well, you could cram 763 of them inside Saturn. Imagine taking our entire world, with all its oceans, continents, and cities, and treating it like a single marble. You'd need over 760 of those Earth marbles just to fill up this one gas giant. What about Earth's so-called twin, Venus? Since it's just a little smaller than our home world, you'd need even more about 890 Venuses, to be precise. It's a stark reminder that even planets we consider similar in size are dwarfed by this giant. Now let's shrink down to the smallest official planet, Mercury. This tiny, rocky world is so minuscule in comparison that you could pack an astonishing 13,000 of them inside Saturn. It's like filling a basketball with grains of sand. And if we look at the famous dwarf planet, Pluto, the numbers become truly incredible you could fit over 100,000 Plutos inside Saturn. At this scale, Saturn is less of a planet and more of a container for entire worlds. But as immense as Saturn is, it's not the king. The true monarch of our solar system, the undisputed heavyweight champion, is Jupiter. If Saturn impressed you, prepare to have your perspective completely shattered. Jupiter is so large it could swallow a whole Saturn with room to spare. In fact, you could take all the other planets in our solar system, Combine them, and they would all fit inside Jupiter. It's that colossal. Even the other giants, Uranus and Neptune, are no match. You could fit about 20 Uranuses or 22 Neptunes inside. It's a cosmic Russian doll, with giants hiding inside a supergiant. But the real shock comes when we compare Jupiter to the terrestrial worlds. The numbers we saw with Saturn are about to be completely eclipsed. Are you ready for it? You could fit 1,321 Earths inside of Jupiter. Let that sink in. Over a thousand copies of our world, each with its own history and life, all fitting inside this one swirling ball of gas. That's a lot of Earths. You'd need even more Venuses, over 1,500 of them. And for the much smaller red planet, you could pack in many more Marses, almost 7,000 in total. 
It's like a cosmic gumball machine filled with planets. As for tiny Mercury, you'd need over 22,000 of them to fill Jupiter's volume. We're not even comparing planets anymore. We're comparing a planet to a swarm of planetary pebbles. And as for we Pluto, well, you could stuff nearly a quarter of a million Plutos inside Jupiter, a number so large it almost loses all meaning. So, some planets are way too small to cram Earth inside of them, and some planets are so gigantic that you have to copy Earth over 1,300 times to fill them up. This incredible range in size is a powerful reminder of just how varied and awe-inspiring our cosmic neighborhood truly is. Oh, and the Sun. Well, the Sun is the absolute king, the heavyweight champion of our planetary neighborhood. It's enormous. It can hold 988 Jupiters inside of it, and 135-6-193 Earths. Let that number sink in for a minute. Okay, that's long enough. What do you think we should compare next next? How about comparing how each planet would kill you if you landed on it? Well, that's a story for another. What if 